welcome to episode seven of All About African Violets. All About African Violets is musically sponsored by Ted Yoder. You can hear his great music at www.tedyoder.com. I hope you all had a great week. I Welcome to my sunroom. Come on in and have a seat. Let's talk about violets. You know, I, um, I had some great comments and some great questions on the website this week. And one of those um, was, why uh, someone wanted to know why was I um, taking the leaves off the plantlets? Why wasn't I just keeping the plantlets themselves? And we talked about putting down a leaf last week. Well, I do that. For, there are a variety of reasons to do that. When you grow for show and you have, I don't have a very large collection of plants right now, as you know, but when you do have a substantial collection of plants, you have to be very, very careful about bringing something new into the plant room. No one would ever intentionally sell you a plant that has a bug or that something is wrong with it. That Nobody would ever intentionally do that. But sometimes things happen. And the safest way to bring something into your plant room is with a leaf. So, um, I mean, you certainly can bring plantlets in. Obviously, I kept some plantlets from the leaves that I got at National earlier this year. And uh, <clears throat> I still have plantlets that I bought at the Illinois State Show that haven't, I haven't been able to give a lot of attention to in the last week. So, you know, I may keep some of them in plantlet form. But if I do, to bring a plantlet in to your plant room, you need to, you don't bring it into the plant room. Let's just say that right away. You must isolate your plants, new plants, from the existing collection. Um, there are a variety of choices, you know, for a number of weeks to do that. I try to err usually on the side of longer rather than shorter. I will generally isolate plants on a different stand or in a different location, um, usually in almost always in a different room, in a different location, for about 12 weeks to see how they are. That's a, about enough time to really see how they are, if there's something wrong, if you think, oh, this isn't looking good, I gotta toss it. But it's also always a very good plan, even if you choose to keep the plantlet, to put down a leaf for insurance, you know, so that you have, um, you'll have another plantlet coming along, you'll have leaves, you know, baby plantlets. As you'll see, things are really growing on the stands already. Um, but you'll have that kind of as a backup. Someone asked if it was, did I do that so I'd have better symmetry? Sometimes that, you know, for me, really, it's a safety issue right now because I'm being very, very careful, even though I don't have much right now. Um, I'm getting in the habit of even if I buy a plant, I can make that choice to keep it and isolate it, but I'm always going to put a leaf down. Um, and it's not really so much about growing, uh, getting better symmetry on a new plantlet. Um, this is completely unscientific, but one of the things that I have found is that when I take a leaf and it grows from the beginning in my growing conditions, that seems to work much better for me. So that's really another major reason why I put a leaf down and then start a plant new. It's certainly more more time involved to grow a, a standard, a really, for me, I think to grow a, a standard that's the larger size of a violet, a standard that's show ready, it can take a couple, three years when you start from a leaf. So. You know, for, for semis and minis, it doesn't take that long. I would say you can usually get them going in a much shorter period of time, six months to a year even. Uh, I think that that works better. But I wanted to just cover that from what we talked about last week. Actually, that's really kind of tips and treasures for today. That's one of the things that I, that I do and the reason that I do it. So one of the things we're going to talk, what we're going to talk about today really is light. I've had questions about this and it's really an important, it's really, it all, Joyce and Kent Stork in their book, You Can Grow African Violets, I'm going to sh try to show it to you on my iPad so that you can see um, the cover. There you go. That's the cover of their book. 
It's wonderful. It is available on the website, um, the AVSA website at avsa.org. It's linked on my on the blog, but I will certainly also link to it in the show notes. But their very first chapter is called Light. It makes a shining difference. And it, she says, she can't say, it all begins with light. Light is essential for plant growth. It is one of the most important factors involved in the successful cultivation of African violets. Lack of adequate light often results in poor asymmetrical growth and the absence of bloom. Finding the right light can turn a novice into a skilled grower. And that is very, very true. I grow my plants, as you know, on light carts because, mainly because I grow for show. But there are plenty of people who grow their plants in a window like the one behind me. This is a, a western, uh, a eastern exposure, excuse me, and there's another window to this side of me that is a north window. So we've got kind of a northeast thing going on here. And in my past experience when I've grown violets under natural light, a north-northeast exposure was ideal. Now, this can be affected by many things. Uh, the trees around, the buildings around, how much light actually comes in. We've got a lot of light this morning. It's, um, it's about 8.30 in the morning here in Chicagoland and the sun is really coming up. But I'm, I'm thinking I look a little less orange today. I was trying to, I, I turned the lights off above because the lights seemed to be good this morning. But I grew under, I'm going, what I'm going to do, and hopefully my plan is to do this for you next week, is to start uh, to buy a violet because I've also had a lot of questions about, well, I've, I've got this violet and I bought some potting mix at the store and what do I do? So we're going to talk about that next week. And I, who have never done this from a store-bought violet, I'm going to attempt to grow a violet in a self-watering pot with the mix that you buy in the store and, uh, and some perlite with it. I'm going to attempt to grow one here in my sunroom, so we'll have something to be checking on in the coming weeks and see how that works. And uh, I've got a great spot right behind me, and hopefully Jupiter will not try to eat it, and uh, we'll see how it goes. So that's something for us to look forward to, hopefully, like I said, next week. But I want to talk a little bit about fluorescent light, because if you are a hobby grower, meaning you really, you've got a lot of plants, you're probably going to grow for show. Um, you'll probably have the best success with, with fluorescent lighting. And, you know, it used to be a pretty simple matter of just buying a light stand and it came and you set it up and, and you went on your merry way. Well, now there are different types of fluorescent tubes and you can't mix them in the fixtures because they're different sizes. There's something called T8 and T12, and I believe the old ones, like the ones I have, are T15s. There are plenty of places to get lights. You can go to your local big box store or hardware store and buy a shop light and hang it. And it's got fluorescent tubes in it. You can do that. You can buy a light cart. There are plenty of places, again, that sell those. The place that I use and like a lot is called Indoor Garden Supply. Sorry, that was Jupiter snoring. I just heaved a big sigh. I'm sure you heard it. He's He's asleep though, he's cocked out down there. Um, and you know, so you can take a look there. I will link to their website um, and if that's something that interests you, you can take a look at it. So now I'm gonna get a little more information here and I'll be right back to share it with you. Okay, I, wanted, I didn't wanna make you sit and wait while I had to thumb through on the iPad to get to the section I wanted to share with you. This is actually though in the, in the very beginning of the book. Uh, in the introduction, and the way that all about that the way that you can grow African violets is set up. This is Joyce and Kent Stork's, Stork's book. You can grow African violets. Um, the first section has all of the basics and everything you need. It's really, really interesting and very, very informative. And they say in the introduction, she says, if you are just beginning your adventure in growing African violets, start with the first section. Follow along through the next chapters of section one and learn about the basic growing factors of light, water, soil and potting, fertilizing, and air. You may be amazed at how these factors influence your plants. 
And it's true. Light is when she said when, when the chapter begins and it says it all begins with light it's really true um most the most common reason that an Af like if someone gifted you an african violet or you bought it at the store and it it just doesn't seem to bloom again for you the most common reason that a violet does not bloom again is that it's not getting enough light so once you find a spot where it's blooming well for you that's great keep going now, in Pauline's book, Growing to Show, she talks about line and African violets too. And um, one of the things actually I probably should tell you is there is a lot of technical information about foot candles and, and inches and watts and all kinds of stuff. As you probably figured out by now, I'm not particularly technical or scientific in that way. I work with my plants. I try to give them what seem what what I think is best for them. If it doesn't work, I try something else. And light carts have worked very well for me. But I also know that there are, you know, I mean there are scientific things behind this and this book in particular really talks a lot about that. If that, you know, if you really need to know the why behind behind how this this is a good a good place to start she says african violets require red blue and yellow wavelengths of the color spectrum variable amounts of light depending on the variety and indeterminate day length light requirements that's already pretty technical isn't it african violets are high energy plants high energy plants require more light than low energy plants such as a philodendron or a similar house plant Depending on your violet setup, you can accomplish this by adding more tubes, adding reflectors above the fixtures to direct more light to the plants, moving the tubes closer to the plants, or having the lights on for longer time periods during the day. So there is a lot of info in here. Um, light time for plant growth is a section in this book. and. Um, one of the sections she says some growers who consistently have plants on the winner's table and she's talking about show plants here report that they run lights for 12 hours a day year round and do not increase light hours in preparation for show other growers use lights 10 to 12 hours for all plants most of the year and increase the light hours according to a schedule before show each grower must determine what works best under their growing conditions and i think that that is a very good point to remember that, and I've talked about, we've talked about this before, I've mentioned it before, what works for me may not always work for you. So it's important to just try things maybe one at a time, and don't move the entire plant collection, you know, onto a different potting mix or with a different light source. Kind of take things easy and see how it goes. See what works for you in your growing conditions, in your home, in your plant room. Well, and if you want to grow under natural light, there is a great, a great article. Actually, it's part two. This is the July-August edition of African Violet Magazine. And there is a part two of an, art, an article. The first part was in the May-June issue called Growing in Natural Light. So you can... Growing in Natural Light. It's written by Claire O'Shea. So she obviously has experience in growing in natural light and has had some success with it. And she's from Australia. So that's great. Um, this, this, um, her article was originally published in the newsletter of the Early Morn African Violet Group in Australia. So this could be a great, a great reference for you. And as always, you know, I, I always talk up the magazine because it really is good. My friend Daryl Hoover's talking it up now on his vlog too, on his video vlog. Uh, it is only $30 a year to join the AVSA if you're in the US and you get this fabulous magazine. It is really one of the most tangible benefits of membership. If you are an international member, um, if you, oh, let's put it this way, if you are in Canada, it is $35 a year and if you are an international member, it's $40 a year. And that's really to cover the postage to get it to you um, every month. So I think it's time for us to take, I hope this gives you a kind of a, a brief introduction to light and how it works well for your plants and why it's important. 
And if you have questions, of course, please leave them on the, on the, leave a comment on the website so we can talk some more about this. But right now, it's time to take a look at what's on the stands. Here we are taking a look at what's on the stands. And I really want to show you this standard. Hopefully I can get a good shot of it. It is really growing well. There are leaves that are ready to come off. And uh, I'll, I may demonstrate that for you because grooming a plant is one of the things um, that's a very good skill to have if you decide you want to grow for show. So this may be something we'll take a look at in the next week or so as well. Now, back up to here. Things are growing. Here is Rob's Antique Rose. It's, it's not bad. It's got a little haloing going on. Not quite sure what that is, but again, sometimes you just don't know on something where it came from before. But here's everybody else. We've got a couple of show hopefuls here. I hope those are in focus for you to see. And then a couple that are just kind of growing. They're not, they don't look like they're gonna be ready for show, but still on the pre-show schedule and everybody is doing their thing. So here we are taking a look out on the stands and you can see that there are lots of little plantlets doing their thing. It's pretty cool, isn't it? I love seeing them. Let's take a look over here on the other side. Oops, sorry. Bump that to the other tray. And pretty much the same thing going on over here. Things are looking good. Things are growing. Like I said last week, I am going to have my work cut out for me very soon. Can you, can you believe how much, and you can see it week to week now, how those leaves and the baby plantlets, they're really all shooting up out of the dirt. Um, I'm gonna have so much work to do. See, this is one of the reasons that you always want to remember to limit your collection. Because when you have too many plants to take care of, it begins to take up a lot of your time. And if you have a busy, a busy life, a job, a family, um, I have a dog now, uh, there is a lot of, of work to be done with your plants. And it's interesting, you know, Daryl Hoover um, from Hoover's Hybrids uh, had started a little discussion on his Facebook page, on the Hoover's Hybrids Facebook page, about, um, about joining a club and having to go every month and, and uh, you know, wonder why he, he made a comment that when he saw the, the Illinois show, when I showed you guys the footage of that, that it looked very small. And, and, uh, and it, like we talked about, it was small this year. But I think we all have very busy lives and fitting our plants in to those lives is one of the fun things about working with them. I enjoy it. I'm, I'm not a member of a local club right now. I'm a member of state organization and re regional organization, and which, which is the Illinois State African Violet Society, the Missouri Valley African Violet Council, and of course I'm a life member of the AVSA, which is national and international in its scope. So, but uh, there are there are clubs, there are things, there are shows, and there is a show coming up. So get the bail money ready. Um, this one is coming up and it's about a month away now, but you know, you might want to do a little advanced planning. This is on the AVSA website under events, so you can go out there and get all the details. But the Ohio State African Violet Society will be having their show and workshops um, on September 14th and 15th in Mansfield, Ohio. And I believe that it is at the Kingwood Center in Mansfield, Ohio. There's a sale from uh, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturday, and then uh, the show and sale, uh, and then the show starts at one o'clock on Saturday and it goes till five. And then on Sunday, it's the show and sale both from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. 
So if you are anywhere near Mansfield, Ohio, um, I've I have never been to the Ellen I stage show, but I have I know people who have, and I heard, I have heard that it is just a wonderful show. So I really encourage you to attend. Um, my understanding, according to their info here, is the admission to the show is free, but the parking costs five dollars. So that's something to keep in mind uh, for the for the weeks to come. I hope that you have a wonderful week to come. I hope your days are filled with all the things you love. Good growing. See you next time.